Welcome to Council Fire with the River Winds. We are your host, Chief Joseph. And Dr. Laurelyn Riverwind. Many blessings to all of you that have joined us tonight at our fire. We'd like to start by just giving thanks to the Creator for another wonderful day. As we begin and go into another new day, we just bless you and we just thank you, Creator. We thank you for for being with us through our hard times, through our bad times, through our rough times, through our trials and tribulations. And bless our listeners, Father, that they um, are giving of their time and their ears to to be able to dwell on the things that are on your heart and um, that are concerns to the body. So we just ask you that you would allow truth to go forth and that you would um, allow peace and no fear or worry. And we just ask for your perfect shalom. And Father, we just come before you in a humble way. And, and we thank you for the body of Mashiach. And we thank you for the outpouring that you have been doing, not just among First Nations, but amongst every nation, tribe, and tongue. As we know and we feel that time is short. And we just bless you and we bless your name in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes, may you be lifted up, Father. So what's on our mind today is end times. And that's probably because of the conference that will be coming up that we'll be speaking at in Ballground, Georgia. Interestingly enough, Ballground, Georgia is a place where traditionally the Cherokee and the Creek would, would come to settle disputes on the, on the battlefield, quote-unquote, by Nejaudi, which is ball, the, the ball ground, uh, ball game. And when you say ball game, you may want to tell them what you're talking about. It's, you know, stick ball. Right, right, right. Tell See, us about the stick ball game. Well, stick ball is a whole lot of fun in... You know, life was very much valued uh, with the Eastern tribes. And rather than going to battle and go to war, oftentimes disputes were settled by taking it to the ball field. So, you know, it's really difficult for, for me and Laurelin to get into, like, watching football. You know, not against, any, not against football for all you football fans out there, but when you've played Indian stickball, where all you have on is your shorts, uh, ladies, you do have shorts and, and a shirt, um, but barefoot, you have two hickory sticks in your hand. Sometimes the field is a mile wide, and you get to hit and clobber your opponents with those sticks. Uh, football with all the helmets and pads just does not interest us. <laughs> I, I remember playing stickball with you many years ago, and as I recall, my team won. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we well, had ruthless players. Yeah, ruthless is definitely definitely part of the descriptor there. But you know, um, in our defense, you know, this game was made to prepare people to go to battle and to prepare toughen people up, so that when they would get onto the battlefield, they wouldn't freeze and to know how to take a beating, how mm-hmm. to give a beating, how to uh, evade your enemies. You know. Well, that's how this is so interesting that the women are allowed to beat the men, but we can't hit you back. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, but the, the girls can come up with some some really uh, clever ways of of getting the ball back when on the battlefield. Uh, but but interestingly usually enough, usually involves blood. Yeah, usually but... involves blood. I still have scars on me from when I played against your team. Yes. <laughs> yes, victorious. Well, you know, Ballground Georgia is one of these places where. The Little Brother of War, which is another translation of the name Tully, uh, Stick comes ball. from Stickball. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, and so we are literally going to be on an ancient spiritual battleground and physical battleground where we're having this end time prophecy conference. Well, isn't that apropos? I mean, when you look at the people would go, when there was a dispute, they would try to settle it through peaceful means so that nobody's life was lost. So... At first, if um, counsel failed, if if words failed to hash out the difference between them, then the next level, the next step was to take it to the ball field, the playing grounds. Which the Irish also had, uh, they, they called it hurling. Yes. They also, the, the Irish and the Celtic tribes did a form of stickball as well to settle disputes between villages. Yes, that's true. So, um, it's, it's interesting though that that they would try to settle it peacefully. Yes, there was an outlet for um, taking out aggressions, but it was <laughs> it was in a form that would not um, create loss of life. Right. 
And so that value of life um, was perpetuated and observed. And when all else failed, then battle was the option. And um, <clears throat> that speaks a lot of, of native value of life. But here on uh, in Ballground, Georgia, at the Southern Appalachian Prophecy Conference that's coming up, that is where we, along with L.A. Marzulli, Casper McLeod, Bill Flynn, um, we will all be speaking about um, end time prophecies and what what we feel is coming. For far too long, the the Bride of Messiah has been trampled on, abused, hurt. Uh, and you know there is a time when, we, when the, there's a warrior bride that needs to rise up and needs to learn how to wield her sword. You know the bride needs to learn how to survive. You know how to prepare. Uh, Proverbs twenty two verse three tells us that the cautious man sees evil coming and prepares, but the fool does nothing and suffers the consequences. That's in uh, Mishle 22, verse 3, or, or Psalms, I'm sorry, Proverbs uh, 22, verse 3. And so, biblically, the Creator wants us, the Lord tells us to prepare when we see evil coming. And we're seeing a lot of that lately, not just in the Middle East, but now right here on our own soil. And that is a matter of huge concern for us. There have been basically acts of violence and declarations of war against our country that are going unanswered and unaddressed and these are portenses of the future these I, they're not slowing down they're they're becoming closer and more um, often <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know in in the old days when back in back in the old days when we were going to school. <laughs> um, and we, we had to look things up with index cards. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> Dewey Decimal Systems. Oh, my goodness, I do feel old. <laughs> but when we were going to school, we would have fire drills and we would have tornado drills. But now there is a need in the schools to have terrorist drills. And that was something that was never a thought in our minds back in our youth and our children are having or our grandchildren are, are going to be growing up in this kind of environment well not just our youth but while i was in the service i mean this 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 type of thing was unheard of you know and and the ideology behind the radical islam that's attacking our country you know they they have already declared war on us on our soil and it just it's ignored their ideology is ignored uh their way of thinking what they're commanded to do is ignored they have declared war over and over not just september 11th but the fort hood shooter the colonel that shot the soldiers at, at, the, at the hospital there uh the shooter that, that shot at the marines here in chattanooga you know where's the call for gun control then you know where's the, where's the call from from the president you know calling for gun control when we've just had four marines die on our own military soil. Not that we support gun control. We very much firmly believe in the Second Amendment rights and and believe that every everybody should have the ability to protect themselves. Um, but hey, let's call it how it is. It's not just the ideology of, of Islam. It's the spirit mm -hmm. of Islam. That spirit is constantly going to contend with us as believers and, and, and with the among Jewish themselves. nation, the you know, e, e, with Israel, yeah, that's the truth. They they're contending enough with themselves internally, but we are the big enemy, and um, there we are going to reveal. Joseph and I are going to reveal um, what we believe is evidence of upcoming persecution of believers within our own borders mm -hmm. um, we have personally come upon evidence ourselves it is of a very disturbing nature and we're going to unveil it at this southern appalachian prophecy conference um, we're definitely living in end times beloved we're definitely 
living the times that the prophets spoke of. We're seeing biblical prophecy coming to pass rapidly, which when Yeshua said he would come quickly, in the Hebraic mindset, it's it's a it's like an analogy of time is going to go on and go on, and then all of a sudden at the end, everything very rapidly takes place. And we're seeing this rapidness take place. You know, just a, a few weeks ago, after Russia entered into the war in Syria, I, I looked at you, Laura Lynn, and I said, how much longer before China gets involved? Mm-hmm. You know, and we see Gog and Magog. And literally within a day, the next day, we got the first report of their aircraft ship um, in Tartarus, Syria. You know, not to mention that they've already been probing our borders in Alaska, too, coming onto uh, into American space. Yes. So the, the enemy is at work. The spirit of the enemy, uh, of the Antichrist, is very much at work. We need to open our eyes. We need to get our heads out of the sand. Because when your head's in the sand, there's only one exposed area that's sticking up in the air. You know? (laughs) (laughs) And you don't want to get spanked because this is not a good spanking. This This is an evil demonic force that's bent on making the world submit, which is what Islam means. And there, the, the God of Islam is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, if I hear one more time, I think I'm just going to scream. Um, when people are so deceived that they believe that the God of Islam is the same as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that is the biggest fallacy. And friends, if if you know people who are under this illusion, it is vital that you share with them the evidence of why that is not the case. And um, that's a topic for a whole nother day and time. But suffice it to say that um, do your homework. Um, Understand that our God is a God of truth. Their God is, another name for him is the deceiver. Um, You cannot have truth, ultimate truth and deception in one common entity it's just impossible and you can't coexist you simply cannot coexist with people who are commanded to kill you you know regardless of whether you're christian messianic whether you're a wiccan a pagan an atheist every so all of us unless we submit are considered infidels you know so it's just a matter of time what did marco polo say in the 15th century you know here's marco polo one of the earliest uh, spice traders, you know, opened up the trade routes uh, throughout Europe, and his exact quote when seen what Islam was doing back in his day, mm-hmm. what did he say? He said, "The only difference between a extremist Muslim, the extremist Muslim is the one cutting your head off, the moderate Muslim is holding your feet down." You know, this was Marco Polo who said this, folks, to show you that nothing has changed. Just that now with media. With computers, information technology, we have we have this at our fingertips. So now we know that this is occur- occurring more often than we've ever seen or has been reported. Yes, and you know, um, so many people have have basically said to us, "You need to be careful what you say. Be careful what you say." You know, our um, our ability to speak out is one of the prized rights that we are given in this country and whether the right is taken away from us or whether we're scared into submitting our tongues to what they will allow us to say is little difference if you're so scared about speaking out against evil that you have become politically correct instead of righteous then they have won You can't, we cannot, saints, we cannot allow them to silence us from speaking truth and speaking what is right. I've told our Father that I am not just ready and willing, but desirous that my life and my death will glorify Him. So if the way that I talk ends up that I have to lay my life down, That is just as much a blessing. I would rather die a glorious death for the Lord, giving Him honor and glory. I'd rather die for the things that I've lived for, which is Him, 
then uh, die warm in my bed. What kind of death is that? We seek, as native people, we always want an honorable death. It means more than a long life. Because if we cannot die an honorable death, then what is our what statement is our death making? And you know, the, that, that ties right into what I was thinking with, as you were speaking that. And I was thinking about, you know, all the people that we've, that we've come across and that we've known um, who call themselves prophets. And I'm, I'm sorry, but a, a prophet, all the prophets that I know of, that I read about in scripture, were, they all died in the end. Um, well, everybody most, dies. Well, everybody in the dies end. in the end. But How these, so do you mean? But these prophets <laughs> were persecuted. Yeah. They, they were killed. Yes. The people did not want to hear what they had to say because they were constantly asking and, and, and reminding the people to make teshuva, to make repentance. Uh, not only that, but if you are a prophet, then you need to be able to be ready and willing to rebuke your king. And when I say your king, I mean your earthly king, mm -hmm. which we have an earthly king. It's called the President of the United States. Right? If you want to be a prophet, be willing to speak out against what, you know, what he's doing, what, what an ungodly, unrighteous king is doing. Because that, folks, is what I've read the prophets in the Tanakh do. They weren't afraid to speak out. You know, even Kepha, what did he say? He said, we must do what Elohim tells us to do. And, you know, we, we've got liberty in what we say because we don't have a 501c3. We don't have a, um, anything to lose because we don't want to be beholden to any man. We don't want to submit what we have to say to anyone except our Heavenly Father. And so if we see wrong, we will tell you, and that is our, our treaty with you, is that we will expose the things of darkness so that you know and we will speak truth to you you know right now there's a infiltration of islam going on on first nations reservations yeah and when we were up in washington dc uh we got to spend some time with bridget gabriel with act for america and and their their people there who were protesting the iranian nuclear deal uh showing their support for israel and we told them about this uh, infiltration, which is very hidden. It's under the radar. Nobody's hearing about it. But so far, 17 reservations have been targeted by the Turkish government for uh, infrastructure, for economic development. You know, there's so much that is happening uh, that's just flying unknown and unnoticed because Indian country is forgotten. Well, beloved, these things that are taking place, these things that we're going to talk about at the End Time Prophecy Conference, are crucial to being able to be prepared. You know, I, I know that it doesn't matter if you're pre-trib, post-trib, um, or if you believe in the rapture, if you don't believe in the rapture. You tried going to the Middle East and telling some of the, the people, the Christians that are being beheaded, murdered, raped, you tell them that there's a rapture for them. You know, they, they are going through the tribulation. They are going through the persecutions. They are not getting a rapture. You know, so so be very be very careful when you speak about uh, theologies and doctrines that that are new. Uh, Not to mention, it doesn't even matter um, where you place the rescue. Um, when you look at when um, you've got you've got people who are um, is that bubble wrap. <laughs> I found it in the Bible. It was hard to resist. Why is there <laughs> bubble wrap in your Bible? I can't believe you're popping bubble wrap when we're talking about end times things. This is serious. Uh, my apologies. I was wanting to go to Nehemia. Oh, I know. You were cushioning it. This is a hard blow. The bubble wrap was meant to cushion <laughs> the hard blow. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but, you know, whether you believe in pre-trip, this is what I was saying pre-bubble wrap, whether you believe in a pre-bubble wrap, whether you believe in pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib, um, it, it, Yeshua makes it very clear in Matthew. Uh, read Matthew 24. I mean, there are persecutions that happened before he returns. And um, it's, you know, 
it's going to happen. And it's before even the beginning of the tribulation. And there are things that occur, the groanings of the earth and the um, all of the earthquakes and the wars and the rumors of war. So preparation for things not always being as comfortable as they have been is really important. Right, and, and Stop, Store up your bubble wrap. Friends. Store up your bubble wrap. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, but we, we also have to be in a place where we're ready to defend our families, to defend our property, uh, to defend our homes. And... You know, I was, I was going to, to Nehemiah to Nehemiah uh, 4 verse 14 where he says, And I looked and rose up and said to the nobles and to the deputy rulers and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the great and awesome Yahweh and fight for your brothers, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. Mm. You know, uh, the bridegroom is coming to... Rescue his bride, <laughs> and the bridegroom is not allowed going to allow his bride to be beaten or abused. You know, there's good, there's a point where he's going to say enough is enough, because unfortunately there are some horrible things that, that we have to go through. There are tribulations. He won't allow his bride to be destroyed, but you know, when I read Matthew twenty two, I see a lot of other people than just the bride. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got the servants, the slaves, the wedding guests, the wedding crashers, yep. the bridesmaid, both the foolish and the sensible bridesmaids. And so um, what you're looking at is everybody thinks that they're the bride of the Messiah, but in reality, many of us are not. And so we need to be looking at, you know, what what does it take to be the bride? Well, first of all, the thing that stands out to me the most is the fact that there's only one bride, and so the bride is united. There are plenty of other pluralities and in individuals when you look at bridesmaids, um, when you look at wedding guests, mm -hmm. wedding crashers, all of this. So the question is, um, are we united? If we are so exclusive, you know, only joining with the people that believe almost exactly like we do, then we're setting ourselves up for failure. You know, we have to we have to be willing to um, to not divide over non salvation issues. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Every time that we grumble or complain or speak words of death over our leadership, uh, pastors, shepherds, uh, we're, we're causing the work of the enemy to be that much easier. What do you mean by words of death? What can you tell us about that? When, when you say speak words of death, do you mean pronouncing word curses, or do you maybe mean also things like negative things? Oh, of on? course, even negative things. I mean, uh, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Yeah. You know, and we're going to eat the fruit, you know, based on what it is that, that we're speaking forth. Are we speaking ed edifying words? Are we speaking words of encouragement over one another? You know, we find, why do we find so many churches all throughout the country? You know, denominations comes from the Latin word to divide the nations. So right off the bat, Satan came in to divide. Well, our standard, our battle standard is the constitution of the kingdom of Yah, which is his Torah, which is what Yeshua taught. And it's what Yeshua is going to teach when he returns again. It says that the nations are going to come to Zion because the law, the Torah, is going to, pour, is going to come forth from there. So by speaking words of, you know, in, encouragement, you know, saying well, you know, it was good, that was uh, encouraging word, you know, uh, thank you, talk, talk to one another, uplift one another, instead of bringing gossip and Lashon Hara, you know, destroying a person's soul with, with gossip that's, it's worthless. It's useless. Yeah, we're supposed to edify each other. And, you know, I, I have really begun to see in my life that sometimes the best way to address an issue is not by going directly to the person. Sometimes it's just by going to our father and talking, saying, listen, this is a problem. You know, how, please help this person. 
and help me through this situation. Because when we pray, we are putting, um, we're putting this issue before our Father, the one who is able to change somebody even better than they are able to change themselves. You know, Matthew 10, 21 through 24, you know, it starts off by saying brothers and sisters will betray one another and have each other put to death. You know, Yeshua very clearly told us who our brothers and sisters were. So those who do the will of the Father, you know, as, as, a, as a body of believers, as the body of Messiah, we have to prepare ourselves for this persecution that's coming. We have to prepare ourselves for sons and sons to betray their fathers and daughters to betray their mothers and vice versa. You know, and, and Yeshua tells us in Matthew 10, 21 through 24, brothers and sisters will betray one another and have each other put to death. Parents will betray their own children and children will turn against their parents and have them killed. Everyone will hate you because of me. But if you remain faithful until the end, you will be saved. Notice that that salvation is coming at the end. Remain faithful until the end. You will be saved. When people mistreat you in one town, hurry to another. I promise you that before you have gone to all the towns of Israel, the Son of Man will come. Disciples are not better than their teacher, and slaves are not better than their master. There's those, there's those words again. You know, what really captures me in that scripture is, everyone will hate you because of me. And to me, that's a really good thing to keep in the forefront of our minds. We, as, as Americans, are so accustomed to having that consumer-based thought of customer service. Please everybody. Make everybody happy. Um, get people to like you. How to win friends and influence people. When we need to have the mindset of understanding that if we don't love our father and his son more than we love our own life, then it's not going to end well for us. We must love them more. We can't be seeking the approval of man or even the, um, you know, the affections of mankind. Because this says when we're in the end times, we are going to be mistreated we're going to be hated, and we're going to be killed. And so, but, but, he says he will deliver us. You know, there's a, another scripture that says, as a good soldier of, of Yeshua, you must en endure your share of the sufferings. In it's our share. It's part, of, it's part of our share of walking in the kingdom, being in the kingdom. It's part of our share for having the authority and, and the royal stamp. Uh, of the king of kings approval over our life and it's our share he received his share of suffering he was crushed he was bruised his beard was ripped out people didn't even recognize him uh, for who he was you know the, the jews didn't reject him uh, they could hardly know who it was that was being led down that street you know with, with the, bearing the cross yeah but you know what i love the most is in second corinthians 4 7 through 11 <clears throat> He says, but we have this treasure in clay jars so that it will be evident that such overwhelming power comes from God and not from us. We have all kinds of troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, yet not in despair, persecuted, yet not abandoned, knocked down, but not destroyed. Amen. We always carry in our bodies the dying of Yeshua, so that the life of Yeshua may be manifested in our bodies too. For we who are alive are always being handed over to death for Yeshua's sake, so that Yeshua's life also might be manifested in our mortal bodies. Can, can, I, want, I want to read that part again. We, we have, have all, all kinds, kinds of, of troubles, troubles but, but we, we are, are not crushed. crushed. We, we are perplexed, yet not in despair. Persecuted, yet not abandoned. Knocked down, yet, yet not, not destroyed. destroyed. Woo! <laughs> if that doesn't fire you up, <laughs> you know, we've been through, Joseph and I, you and I have been through some of the most trying times of our life recently, and I just, I, I've noticed that I'm not reacting to it the way that I normally would, and I can credit only the fact that my Savior is remaking my mind. He's renewing my mind to the mind of the Messiah, 
And during this time, even through all of the difficulties and all of the trials, we I, I just feel joy. I mean, I feel Overwhelming I joy. feel joy and I feel hope and I feel like it doesn't matter what happens. It's all going to turn out good. Mm-hmm. It's all going to turn out for our good. And I I love that about Romans 8:28 because it he doesn't just say that it's going to turn out for God's good, you know? He tells us it's going to turn out for our good. If we love him and if we're called called according according to to his purpose. purpose. You know, so yes, the the creator can take any situation, any situation, and make good of it. But we have to make sure that we fall into those qualifiers of being called, which you are called, and then loving him. Because to love him is to obey his commandments. And his commandments aren't a burden. No. Well, you know what I notice about... um, times of persecution in scripture it's when the church is the strongest it's when believers are at their prime miracles upon miracles healings no lack of provision there are salvations and people coming into the kingdom despite the fact that they know they're going to be persecuted and what's a what's a perfect example of where we find that in scripture in acts 2 and 3 the the first century church i mean they had joy without measure they had they were operating in the gifts of the spirit in a beautiful way there was enough food for everybody but there was persecution and they were happy in the midst of it you know it's it, it may be difficult times but but beloved our savior our our abba our father they they are going to come to our um, to our rescue, the spirit will be so thick with us when that happens that it'll be it'll be such a, a joy. Um, so so be of good cheer, as Scripture tells us. You know, this is um, we're going to live through some of the most amazing times, and maybe we may die, but we're going to die anyway. You know, and to die is gain. Yes. You know, and, so, and your faith is going to get tested. You know, First Peter 1 Peter 1.7 tells us, So that the proving of your faith, much more precious than the perishing gold, but having been proved through fire, may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revolution of Yeshua, revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach. Well, maybe, uh, that, that, maybe it is a revolution that needs to happen in your life. Mm-hmm. A revolution of your mind. You know, going from a carnal mindset to... Uh, the mindset of Messiah, you know, all those bracelets about, you know, what would Jesus do? You know, what what would he do? What would Yeshua do? Why aren't we doing as he did? What did he say about what he did? He said, greater things than these you will do. Well, that the time of that persecution is upon the bride. The gospel has come back full circle to Israel. The people in Israel are accepting Yeshua HaMashiach because they're not, they're not being presented with the Joseph of the Genesis dressed like a pagan. They, they're they seeing their Jewish brother, and, and they're coming to know Yeshua. It's happening all over the Middle East. It's happening in Iran, in Iraq, uh, in Syria, where as the persecution is coming at the hands of ISIS, more and more of the people from the Islamic faith are turning away and, and turning to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're turning to Yeshua and knowing him as the prophet that was spoken about all throughout scripture. You know, I, I remember Papa Gerald, Gerald Durstein, um, telling us just a week or two ago that there were 5,000 Muslims saved in one, in one event, one speaking event that was sponsored by somebody that he, he led to the Lord. Who's, who's in, who has an underground church in Syria, uh, they've, and they've already lost, what was it, 12 Twelve of their pastors have been beheaded for the faith, and yet still, they're out there preaching the gospel. Father, we just we just ask your divine protection, supernatural yes. provision and protection over these men of Yah who are out there, who are in the trenches, who are in the desert, who are not loving their life, but are willing to give it up for just one soul to be saved. Father, thank you for 
turning what what ISIS is turn is is meaning for evil and submission, and you're turning it into this powerful testimony a revival. of revival yes. among the Arab people. And you know we can't we can't just single out the Muslims because the the, the Arab people are a seed of Abraham as well. You know the the are of the line of Yaakov. You know, and so there is there is a place for them in the kingdom as well. So, in end time preparations, let's. Um, Did I say Jacob? I meant Ishmael. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of gave him a little question look there. Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, genealogy. Okay, well, it's not Ishmael. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in end time preparations, of course, as a nature path, one of the things that goes to my mind is we will not have natural medicine, or we will not have some of the medicines that people have grown accustomed to. Mm -hmm. in pharmacia so uh, it's good to prepare um, with your knowledge of giving using what our Heavenly Father created for us to use here for our health and so we're going to have an herbal moment and remember this any advice that I give is not meant to replace anything your doctor says or does. It's not intended to treat, diagnose, verify, or any other thing that you might want to call it doing. And no, it's not been approved by the FDA, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so today, I'm going to teach you how to properly make a hot herbal infusion. Yes, I know this seems very basic. But I have found it's good to revisit the basics sometimes because there are little nuances that we could miss. So, if you have ever made a pot of hot tea or a cup of hot tea in your life, you have made an herbal infusion. Um, however, I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of points that are um, very important. When we do herbal um, infusions, hot infusions, it's typically of the aerial portions of an herb, uh, the flowers, the leaves, the stems. And so um, it's these, these are the parts of the plant that are more tender and um, easier to damage with heat. So we, keep, we have to make sure not to overheat them. Now what you do is you put the herbs in a cup or um, some type of container. Sometimes people put them in little stainless steel balls or make little packets um, or you can use muslin. Um, different, different ways of doing it. But you, you put, you take distilled water and you boil it separate okay you just boil you just boil the um, distilled water and the reason why you want to use distilled water is because there are certain minerals and um, substances within the plant material that you want to draw out and when you use distilled water it helps draw more of the medicine out from the plant okay um, so you boil distilled water and then you pour, you remove it from the heat and then you pour the, the water that you just removed from the heat into the cup with the herbs and you immediately cover it with something you want to make sure that none of the steam escapes um, there are volatile oils in there that are released when that water hits the herbs and you want to keep as much of that medicine in as possible. And then you let it sit for 10 or 20 minutes depending on the strength. The longer you let it sit, the stronger it can get. Um, and you know some people like to, uh, and then you, of course you would strain off the herbs. Um, some people like to add honey and things like that to their tea, stevia. You know, I suggest that 
if possible, you just drink it with the straight herbs because it will begin to develop your palate to appreciate herbs more than you did. In this culture, we're so steeped in everything, wanting everything sweet, everything sweet. And we need to get out of that mindset. We need to retrain our taste buds. And so um, that's my suggestion is to, to do it without all of the sweetness to it. Now, peppermint is a nice option to add. And if you'd like um, peppermint, it's a nice cooling effect. And it doesn't have sweet, but it gives you the um, a nice flavor that can help with some of the more bitter herbs. And what's peppermint good for? And let's say you have a situation where um, you have no access to a pharmaceutical. Uh, but peppermint is something that grows very easily in a lot of climates. What's peppermint good for? Well, peppermint is good for the digestive system. It's good for nausea, uh, for unsettled stomachs. Um, it can also give a, a feeling of coolness through the body. So if you've got people that are working in the heat a lot or um, needs that refreshing, it can help with that menthol that's in the, the leaf itself. But it's, it's very good for that digestive system and to ease nausea. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing some of your herbal knowledge. Uh, we always look forward to, to hearing uh, your sharing of the plant world. You know, Scripture says that, that the Lord gave us the, the herbs and the plants uh, for medicine. And even the tree of life, its leaves will heal the nations, right? Mm -hmm. um, well... There, there's there, there's so much going going on. We're actually in the middle of a transition uh, as as we're recording this show. Uh, we're going to be moving, and and it's just been a, a wonderful uh, and also you know not not scary experience. Uh, there was some anxiousness on my part, but Yeshua says be anxious about nothing, and we've just absolutely seen the hand of God at work uh, in our life as He's closing one door and opening others. Um, and what, what would you have to say for encouragement to those who feel they have things closing in around them, uh, but yet there, there's a hope uh, of, of what God is going to do in their lives, just based on what we've been going through the past couple months? You know, um, I guess the biggest thing was that would be that Creator has your best interest in mind. You know, He's, he's in control of everything that goes on and although we can tend as humans to mess things up quite nicely he has an ability to not just rescue us but to rescue it and make it look even better than it would have had the tragedy or the mess up not happened and so if we will continue to pursue and humble ourselves and to try that's the key humility you know if we, that's the key if we're prideful how can he help us what does what help do we need well what does scripture say that if you're prideful he opposes you well no wonder if we think we've got it all down why <laughs> why should he bother himself to even pay attention right and the minute that we think we got it that's when we know we don't have it yeah you know so we're going to be humbled one way or another. Either it's going to be because we humble ourselves or it's going to be because we become humbled by an outside force, mm -hmm. be, it, be it God or be it the enemy's, um, you know, attack on us or our own ability to completely mess up our, our lives. Mm -hmm. Which is usually <laughs> what happens. <laughs> but then he's able to, to take that, that mess and turn it into a message, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we we just want to speak that encouragement to you. You know, we were we've been uh, living in this house for several years now uh, here in the Appalachian Mountains. It's beautiful, and we received an email one day uh, from the landlord that we needed to to move by the end of this month, actually of October. And literally, uh, we'd had another email that talked about a home that was available that very next day. And so, there's so many things that. The, the opportunities that will come, the doors will open as some are being closed. But you also have to be careful of counterfeits. 
Uh, the enemy likes to do a lot with counterfeits. He knows as much um, as he's allowed to know about God's plans for you. You know, I'll give you a perfect example of counterfeits. It was a counterfeit bride. Uh, we know there's a counterfeit bride in Scripture, uh, and we know that Scripture calls her the whore of Babylon. Uh, but even in our own life, uh, we had a counterfeit. Like literally, uh, there, there was a person who uh, demanded that I marry them um, at a certain location on the Cherokee Reservation on a certain date, um, or the, I was going to die. And this person said that th she was going to make sure of this. So this was before we were. Married. This is before me and Laurel and were married. Well, do you know that this person had the same maiden name, uh, same tribe. Me and Laurel and did end up getting married in Cherokee um, on the date that this person had, had, had proclaimed, uh, and it was just an example of a counterfeit. So, so we just pray, always be in prayer that that you not get deceived by the counterfeits that come into your life that are there to steer you off course from what from what Creator has planned for you. Can I jump to a completely different topic? Yes. <laughs> um, with the last few minutes that we have here, you know, you mentioned something earlier that um, that set me thinking. You said something about King, and um, I just wanted to to give a few minutes to honor my friend who has uh, who's just passed away. He was the High King of the Marshall Islands, and his name was Juralang Zedekiah. And um, he, he was the president at one time, and, and at his time of death he was a senator. But he was a good friend of our family, and, um, and the entire nation of the Marshall Islands is mourning the loss of the sudden loss of him um he was a couple of years younger than my father so and was you know my parents were best friends with he and and his wife um when i was growing up and so it it's a a matter of i i'm i'm mourning his loss right now he was a wonderful man and um if you think of him if you think of this, I just ask you to pray for his wife, Anna, and for their family and for the people of the Marshall Islands right now. And that's Marshall Islands is where, I mean, you had a lot of uh, Paul experiences, Shaul experiences. <laughs> yes, you I were did. shipwrecked, you were got dinghy fever, you had all sorts of, you had your life being trying to be taken from you. Um, but, but, it, but it really shaped your formative years on the mission field, you know, sleeping in little uh, grass, grass uh, uh, but, huts right yeah. there on the ocean. I mean, what a wonderful way to wake up in the morning. It definitely was um, many fond memories and, and set, set us up for being able to experience life outside of the typical United States living. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the king and queen wanted you to marry their son, the prince. Oh! <laughs> I can't believe you told them that. <laughs> Is nothing sacred anymore? <laughs> oh boy, he's gonna tell it all. Uh, they were they were just um, a wonderful family, and um, I miss seeing them. I'd love to visit them again. You know, I I always thought there'd be more time. So um, it's a good time to give thanks for the loved ones that we know and have, because we always think that it will that we'll have more time that there'll be more memories in the future and that there'll be more um more coming but that doesn't actually always happen and so <clears throat> i hope we have um i hope we've given you some perspective today to cherish the and be so thankful for what you have right now and to look to the Lord for your protection and your joy in the midst of sorrow. He is our joy. He is our full cup. Absolutely. Overflowing. Overflowing. And Father, we just we just pray that your blessings would just go upon everybody uh, right now that's listening. And that your perfect shalom, in the name of the Prince of Shalom, Yeshua, just cover everyone here that's listening. And it, it, for more information, for more in the archives... For more information on the, the conferences and events that we have coming up, 
uh, go to www.theriverwinds.com. Uh, sign up for our newsletter. Check out our blog. Find us on Facebook. Uh, we're about our father's business. And thank you for coming to the Council Fire.